actually before we start, um, in case anyone kind of doesn't know who is Shadi Nasir, can uh, one of you tell us who is Shadi Nasir? Sure, I can give a brief introduction. So Shadi Nasir because, is... Um, I did, uh, brother, I did ask this because I am sure Muslims are going to discredit him. So before they kind of get into the mind of discrediting, we just tell him background. <laughs> Yeah, that's fine. So yeah, so Shadi Nasser, he is a professor or an assistant professor at Harvard University, which for those of you in the UK, that is like the equivalent of Oxford, Cambridge, it's a very prestigious university in America. And he specializes in Quranic sciences. So he, he does classical Arabic. He, um, he, I think, I think his PhD is actually in Arabic and then Islamic literature. So, so his area of expertise is actually Quranic studies. The field that he's interviewed on, the field that he writes on, is uh, Quranic studies, the transmission of the Quran. And of course, naturally, the topic of preservation comes up in those areas. So he's qualified to speak on these topics. His uh, native language is Arabic, and so that helps him dig into the original sources. Okay, so he is allowed and able and capable to speak on the Quran and Islam. Good. Um, okay, let's um, play the video and then we um, continue from there. There's, there's no way to say that the Quran as you have it today, it's exactly how the Prophet was reciting it. It is unique, but it is not miraculously unique. Yes, there are many grammatical inconsistencies in the Quran. If they were written by a person, by a poet, they would go after him. It's like, oh, this is wrong. You don't justify. But because it's the Quran, you have to justify. It cannot be wrong. Throughout the whole Quran and traditions, you know, the Prophet is struggling to get divine revelation. He's even struggling with, 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 with the devil. There are also many opinions that abrogation doesn't necessarily have to do with abrogation. It's about the devil sometimes inspiring. Uh, is it possible for academics to professionally verify and conclude that the Quran is the word of Allah or the word of a God? Mm, no, <laughs> <laughs> that's the short answer. It's really pointless to tackle this question. You want to believe it's the word of God? It is the word of God. You don't want to believe in that. It's not. Uh, it, it's very common to find in these early critiques and texts that they say Muhammad wrote. Muhammad wrote down this and that. So right. I mean, it's the it's it's perfectly fine. And even uh, respected uh, Orientalists, mm -hmm. in a sense of their of their work, um, they they never thought that uh, the Quran was a revelation. It's mm -hmm. Muhammad who. Uh, wrote the book and it's mm -hmm. it's perfectly fine uh, Nuldike, the, the greatest one of the greatest german orientalist in that sense and he he was referring to the early period as muhammad's creative period in the oh, yeah. in the earlier surahs and then he started to lose his creativity uh, with the later uh, uh, medinin chapters the verses got longer repetitive etc um, and everyone respects Nuldike and, and his work, uh, mm -hmm. including Muslims, uh, right? So at the end of the day, it's your own uh, beliefs, what, what you want to believe about the Quran, whether it's the word of God or revelation or not. Um, it's, uh, I think academia is beyond this. Mm -hmm. um, so the short answer is no. So in the early period, you want to convert the pagans. You want to convince them of the new religion. In the later period, you already have a core of uh, Muslims. And now you are trying to set new rules for the new community, uh, almost starting a new state. And when you have a new state, you do need a physical text. In the tradition, we do have accounts about the prophet having scribes. Uh, it's almost verifiable, right? That he had scribes. There are many accounts about that. So if he had scribes, it means that he had some intention to write down, maybe not the whole text, some parts of it, uh, some verses, maybe important uh, chapters, I don't know. Uh, there are accounts of him trying to tell people to reorganize verses, put this verse here, remove this from there, right? Um, 
there are also throughout the whole Quran, you, there are references to uh, the pre-Islamic codices, mm -hmm. pre-Islamic, right? The Bible, the, uh, um, the sheets of Abraham, of Moses. So if you are starting again a new religion and you have this concept that religions before you, they also had scriptures. So you also want to have a scripture as well. Uh, you find the reports of the compilation of the Quran mm -hmm. after the uh, after the death of Muhammad. The quote, um, how could I do something that the Prophet himself did not uh, exactly. do or intend to do? Correct, and, correct. Uh -huh. Exactly. So this is, uh, this is a, a problem when you have competing traditions. So you have traditions, and not, not only that, I mean, even the, the collection of uh, the report of the collection of the Quran, the first one, how this companion, he was going around uh, trying to get the Quran from the hearts of man, uh, from camel shoulders, from leaves, etc. If the Prophet already had some kind of collection, why do you, why don't you go and consult it? Mm -hmm. Right? And there's no record in the collection that I went and consulted this uh, proto-collection of the Prophet, right? Uh, it gives you a very different idea of um, of how the Quran was at least memorized or scattered among people. So it is an, it is a problem. How do you bring these competing traditions uh, together? And there are also reports that uh, some of the wives of the Prophet that they had a kind of protocodices as well. Mm -hmm. uh, right, Aisha had seems a codex according to one of the of the traditions his companions they had some kind of codices not necessarily full-fledged codices but at least something it is an issue when you are trying to bring these all these accounts together and that's why usually muslim scholars they tend to focus more on chains of transmission of these reports mm -hmm. so, okay well this report has a better chain of transmission so i will consider it more authentic than the other one can it be confirmed? Okay, let's pause here for a second. Um, so there was a kind of question on, um, do you as an academic tackle that um, Quran is the word of God or you look at from the historical side? And then also there were some comments and discussions regarding or comments regarding the um, completion of the Quran as well as why did Muhammad kind of didn't bother to put together um so in our live streams it's kind of basic principles gentleman's goes first brother jay do you have any comments to make so far <laughs> okay thank you uh yeah so so the first part that he was talking about with abrogation he was referring to the fact that there's a verse in, in the quran that says that the that, that Satan comes and puts something on the mouth of the prophets and then Allah comes and he, you know, he, he takes it away. So he was saying that there's, there's some interpretations of the doctrine of abrogation to where when Muhammad was, would receive what he thought was revelation was actually satanic and then Allah would abrogate that satanic revelation. So Muhammad would receive revelation according to the Muslim tradition. He would receive revelation from the devil, from the Satan. And then Allah would come along and abrogate it. So that's very problematic. That's very problematic that their prophet couldn't distinguish between between who the you know Jesus said like my sheep know my voice. They hear they know my voice and they follow me. Right? Jesus said that his sheep know his voice. Muhammad didn't know the voice of his God. He would often confuse it with the voice of the devil. And so that that's one point. Um, yeah, let, and then let, before let we just, go on to the other ones. Yeah, yeah let me just are. add something on that, brother. Um, so therefore, we are not surprised to see Surah 53, verse 19, as the well-known satanic verses end up in the Quran because Muhammad couldn't even recognize the voice of Satan. And same exactly. same comes with Ayat al-Kursu um, 255. So there is like in-house discussions regarding is the Ayat al-Kursu um, voice of Satan or comes from the uh, comes from the um, angel Gabriel. So as the man of God, Muhammad was not capable to recognize whose voice he is listening. Um, 
versus, as Brother Jai said, Jesus says, my sheep will know my voice. Um, exactly. Daughter of Christ? Uh, yes, exactly. And um, the verse that you were talking about, brother, was Surah 22, verse 52, for people um, who want to look it up. Uh, sister, I find it funny that he says, abrogate. We abrogate what the devil says. Because abrogate means that something was valid for a short time, including a Quranic verse, and then Allah replaces it with something else. So Allah, that is now admitting, if he says abrogate, that the uh, the, the the devilish verses, satanic verses, were valid for a short time before he replaced them with something else. So he treats Satan's words as he, he treats his own words. Or the question would come, since the Quran is identified as the eternal word of Allah in eternal tablets, then why at the first place word of Satan ends up in the eternal tablets? Surely yeah, right. Yeah. Allah's words should be dignified enough to be protected enough from Satan's tra tra trampling. He shouldn't have allowed him to put any verse there to be abrogated in the first place, but he allows it. Um, so that in itself is 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 um, against Islam. And sister, uh, he, as he and said also, something. Just also on the topic of abrogation, abrogation principle goes like Allah is going to send something similar or something better, something similar. Like, um, so Allah is kind of sending something similar to um, what um, Satan revealed at the first place. Not getting rid of it, but sending something similar. Right, so Satan met that challenge to produce something like the Quran. Yeah. The Quran challenges the mankind and the jinn to produce something like it. And and yeah. throughout the Quran, it, it kind of gets shortened. I think one time it says like five, produce five uh, chapters like it. And then it gets like shorter and shorter. Then eventually it says like, just produce a surah like it. Yeah. And, you know, the Satan, he met the challenge because he fooled Muhammad into thinking that he was getting the Quran when he wasn't getting it. And then Allah had to give something similar, like you said, similar to what Satan gave, according to this interpretation. Yeah. Good point. Um, um, sister, sorry. I... What really, what, what really struck me, sister, one of the points he made was that, remember when he said about how the creative period in Mecca, the voices were the, the verses were more poetic, and then it became and then he had a non creative verses in Medina when he started to, to get a bit older and lose his creativity. Uh, sister, that answered right. a question I always had when I was Muslim sister. Why are the verses in Mac the Meccan verses so like easy to memorize? They're poetic, they're I thought they were beautiful at the time. But the Medinan um, verses are all so long and it's like someone rambling. That's why now, now he answered my question, sister. Yeah. Good. Still... And that, that's something that you could... Go on, brother. I was just saying that that's a point, that's a point that you... For, so that's a point that is, it's a really great point. And it also can, you know, lead to this other question of authorship of the Quran. And how many authors of the Quran are there because that's one of the way that's one of the ways that that people determine authorship of a book the, by they they evaluate the language the structure the vocabulary the literary devices that are that are used and if they think that they're they're radically different from each other then they conclude that there's there are different authors now of course that's not the only conclusion you can draw from that there's sometimes you use different ways of speech when you're talking to different audiences but for muslims who are always appealing to critical scholars like bart ehrman <laughs> they're always appealing to these critical scholars um someone like bart ehrman would if he were to apply that principle that he applies to the bible if he were to apply that to the quran and say just by the language the bish by the language like god of christ said you have some that are quite poetic and, and structured in a way that is eloquent and then you have other ones that are very simplistic and the arabic is and, and it's just not impressive it doesn't seem like it's written by the same it's like it's like one of them looks like it's written by shakespeare and then the other one's written by someone who's like third language is english and they're struggling really hard uh, by the way, brother and sister, um, now looking back at it, even the short poetic uh, surahs, I still think they're stupid, by the way. 
and not that impressive, but let's say more impressive than the than the others. Yeah. Um, okay, just um, kind of side note of those of you who are joining us in the chat. I noticed that a couple of people are being timed out because they were writing something which is not linked with the topic which we are discussing. Um, dear Mr. Muslim, um, topic is the preservation of the Quran and we titled it as, uh, actually it was titled as the 10 truths about the Quran. Can you please engage with the topic and then all other things we can deal with that on another um, another live stream. Um, any comments on the um, any comments on the Muhammad Ditev subscribers yet? Quran has been failed to compiled under Muhammad and then it's burning uh, by the time of um, Uthman. Any comments on that? Um, um, just like every, I think, just like a lot of things Muhammad tried, they failed miserably. Uh, what I'm thinking is that he probably did try to put something together. Uh, but probably got distracted by all his wives and wars and things and died before the end of it. And then people didn't quite know whether to complete compiling it or like he said, they, one of them said, how do I do something that the prophet didn't do and didn't say to do? Um, and I liked sister how he said that they need the chains of transmission because they have competing accounts of everything. Yes. So, um, I think he tried to imitate, copycat the other religions like Judaism and Christianity because they have a scripture. He tried and failed and died before he could. And then his followers did a, a horrible job of compiling the Quran um, because uh, all these codices were different, all these variations. And we were in the, we're in the mess we are in today with a not preserved Quran. So um, the, it's not the chain... Um, the name of the people who kind of passes the Quran to one another and then they pick which one is they need to go same in the come to the hadith as well. Brother Jai, would you say that kind of stepped into the Islamic tradition in a sense of who is Quran we are going to follow, need of like whom we, whom t uh, which tribe are we going to be, become a member or that stepped in with the order of uh, Muhammad or order of first four caliphs. What do you think? I think it's I think it's very clearly the case that it is the 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 caliphs after Muhammad, not him himself, but after him, the people who were not in, like even from the most from the Muslim perspective, the people who are not inspired, the people who aren't uh, prophets, they're not messengers. These are the ones whose Qurans they follow and their official copies and codex and codices. Um, so yeah, it's definitely after Muhammad for yeah. sure. And, and um, just also, we did discuss in the past that um, written down version of the Quran actually, even it's a bit controversial, but that was by the that's identified as Buddha because. Um, Zaid bin Tabit, who was the companion of Muhammad, as well as the first caliphs, did something which Allah, um, which Muhammad didn't do. So that was the first Buddha in Islamic history, as well as another Buddha of burning the Quran. Um, anything else, um, beloved ones, would you like to add so far what we said? I'm happy to continue, sister. Okay. Uh, just a quick comment. Yes. Just a quick comment about about can academics determine whether the oh, Quran yeah. is inspired or not? Um, I think that that's an interesting question to ask. Now, of course, he's he's an atheist, agnostic, so that so he's got a different perspective and, and just inspiration in general. He doesn't even believe God exists, let alone inspiration. But if he's asking asking someone who is an expert in Arabic, an expert in the Quran, and he's asking him, can you as an academic um, state as an academic, not not uh, not based on faith, but based on your academics, is this book from God or not? Like, is is the linguist is it like there's a linguistic miracle? Is it miraculous? All of these things. I think that that's an interesting question to ask. And you know, Shad Nasser, he's he said no. We we really don't even deal with that question. So you have scholars who are Muslims and scholars who are not Muslims, but when they're doing their academic 
research on the Quran, that doesn't really play into it, whether it's like from God or, or not. Um, and that's obviously radically different than the Muslims' perspective on, on, the, on the Quran. So they would say that based on the language, so, so th they, might, they might try to call us out on this and say we're being inconsistent or something like that, but they say based on the language of the Quran, that, it, that that's what makes it miraculous. The Quran itself says if you can't produce something like it, then that's evidence that it's from God. So if people who dedicate their lives to studying the language of the Quran aren't coming up with this determination that it's inspired, then that go, seems to go against the Quran itself. Whereas the Bible makes very different claims for its um, for, for the fact that it's inspired. And I mean, th that's just two different things. So... For Muslims who who might think that that's something we're being inconsistent on, it's not because these guys are spending their academic careers studying, knowing, and reading the language of the Quran, and they're taking up the challenge and like you know, can you produce anything like it? Is this miraculous in speech or whatever? Although the Quran doesn't you know use that same vocabulary, um, I just wanted to you know just be clear on that point in case someone tries to say we're being you know double standards or something like that. Yeah, and even, for example, when I do British Museum tours and uh, British Library tours on, on Bible, um, so we do have um, historical evidence, one of the, like, lots of historical evidence confirms the historical reliability of the Christian scripture, but those historical evidence does not confirm to us Bible is at the end Father's love letter to his people or Bibles at the end kind of helps us to feel um, the beat, heartbeat of Lord Jesus Christ. So that's like different topic versus um, uh, versus with the, when you look at from the academic perspective, it's like, um, right. I remember like in my early days at Speakers Corner, Dr. J. Smith used to say, Muslims believe um, Quran is the word of God um, given given by Allah to a man called Muhammad through angel Gabriel. And then he would go other kind of states. Oh, they believe it's been perfectly preserved. Um, and today we can simply see that, uh, like, put together under the Caliph Uthman. And then when after he made that statement, he would say, we weren't able to kind of make a case, historically make a case regarding the first point that Quran was, revealed by Allah to Muhammad or by Gabriel to Muhammad as the revelation. But we, we are dealing with um, later points on is this being perfectly preserved or can we identify this as the reliable um, reliable writings. But um, at the end, um, Shadi Nasr simply expresses as an academic, uh, it is not that your job to kind of make a statement such as Quran is the divine revelation from Allah. They can look at the um, they can look at the historical side of it, or he's even talking about the grammatical side of things. But making a statement based on belief would not be in the academic um, circle. Okay, shall I continue? Yes. Oh uh, yeah, fine by me. Yeah with uh, certainty uh, that the content and or the text of the not necessarily full-fledged policies but at least second. something uh, it is an issue when you're trying to bring these all these accounts together and that's why usually muslim scholars they tend to focus more on chains of transmission of these reports mm -hmm. so okay well this report has a better chain of transmission so i will consider it more authentic than the other one can it be confirmed with uh, certainty uh, that the content and or the text of the Quran that we have today was mm -hmm. recited by Muhammad? The sh again, the short answer is no. The short answer is no. It's there's no there's always a probability issue. Mm -hmm. OK, so there's no hundred percent. There's no zero percent. It's always in between. There's there's no way to say that. The, 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 the Quran, as you have it today, it's exactly how the prophet was reciting it. It's, it's, it's impossible, especially that when you have so many traditions that tell you otherwise. 
yeah, so the point I was making about abrogation is that if we go by these traditions, these verses uh, were Quran at a certain point, mm -hmm. right? Uh, but then again, if we follow the tradition, they were abrogated later on. So at a certain point, they were Quran, but then at, a cer at another point in time, they ceased to be Quran. And my point is, if they were Quran at a certain point, they were recited by people by the prophet and by the companions, but then they stopped reciting them later on, mm -hmm. uh, which brings me back to your question is that that's one angle to even handle the question is that, of course, the Quran we have now, it's almost, it's very difficult to say it's the same, exactly mm -hmm. the same text that people were reciting 14, 1400 years ago, mm -hmm. not to mention variant readings, the codices of the companions are different arrangements of of uh, of verses uh, so so yeah this is why it's very challenging to say well it's exactly the same that the prophet was reciting because there are many traditions that tell you otherwise ibn masoud had a codex ubay had a codex which were different and we all this is reported in the tradition so there are sometimes differences in uh, chapters in syntax uh, more or less they follow the same structure mm -hmm. But there are differences. So you can't say it's 100%. All the codices were similar. No one says that. Okay. We don't know. We don't have manuscripts. Muslims actively reported about that. And they they themselves say that there were the codices were different. Can it be proven beyond three? Okay, let me just pause here. <laughs> so um, I will play a clip, I think, in this moment. So question is, um, to... Today's Quran, which Muslims are reciting, let's go with the Hafs Quran, is that the same Quran which Muhammad recited? And in that moment, also we heard that actually no one is making such a claims. Um, gentlemen, first, Brother Joy, if you kind of make some comments to us, how he's confirming actually what has been said for the last couple of years. And then um, I'll pass it to Daughter of Christ, and then we hear that famous video where dot by dot letter by letter it's the same quran muhammad received uh okay uh just so i'm not gonna repeat some of the points in that are, are we talking about the deleted interview or are we talking about something else no uh, i was gonna bring up the video where muslims because ah, okay. um Shadi I, I said, like, yeah yeah yeah, Shadi yeah, said that, yeah people don't make that claim Mm -hmm. um, on the present we don't like people don't say we do have the quran of muhammad people don't say that he said <laughs> Um, okay. Yeah. So, 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 in that deleted interview, there's also something similar to this, where Yasser Qadi says he said he asked the question rhetorically, "Are you sure that that's the way Muhammad recited the Quran in early Medina?" That's that's what he says to Muhammad Hijab, and so that question is really what Shadi Nasser is getting at here, and he's answering it and saying, "Well, we really can't be certain. You're right. You're you're right to cast doubt upon that. We don't know exactly." how he recited the Quran. We don't know exactly what he said. Now, it's different when you're talking about post-Uthman and you're talking about like, you know, what is the Uthmanic codice or codices of Uthman? Because there are, you know, there are different ones. Uh, that, that's a different question. But what we're pushing it back before Uthman, before this, before this compilation, before this uh, canonization, we're asking Muhammad, do we know what Muhammad's Quran looked like? And I think he, he gives the answer and he says, no, we don't know. We, we, we can't know exactly what his Quran would have looked like. Okay. Dot of Christ? Sister, it's no wonder that Yasser Qadi didn't, couldn't say what he would put on a blank mushaf. And it, it, would it be the same as what Muhammad recited? He was talking, when he said it's not an easy yes or no, he was talking from knowledge. I'm going to repeat what uh, Shari Nasser said. There is no way to say the Quran we have today is what Muhammad recited, especially when there are so many traditions that say otherwise. Not just the abrogated verses that we used to be what Muhammad recited are not there anymore, but also the variant readings, different arrangements of verses, chapters, different codices of the different companions he just mentioned two there are many 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 companions 
including Muhammad's own wives that had different Qurans to each other. And it's those traditions themselves that admit that they are different. It's not from outside. So, and he said also, sister, there are no manuscripts. So uh, what, do, what do we have today? What is this Quran that Muslims buy today? Where is it from? Who put it together and what's in it? It's just what someone put together. Best guess. That's what I say. And um, if they're not reciting what Muhammad reciting, then what do they have to stand on? Mm. I just want to quote Yes Akali verbatim. He said, are you certain that that's the way it was recited in early Medina? That's his wording that he said in that deleted interview. Are you certain? So he's casting doubt upon it. And and he's really essentially agreeing uh, with Charlie Nasser here that we don't we don't know. We don't have his exact Quran. And also, um, like from just from the tradition, for example, we know certain verses were revealed, they were practiced, but miracle sheep came and then eat those verses, they are not in today's Quran. Uh, we know from the tradition, uh, like we put a um, couple of short um, videos a um, couple of months back where we looked at certain, wor certain words, how they were different according to early, um, early Islamic tradition. In that list, if any of you kind of give a little bit attention, you will get to see all together we gave you over 45 different names of different Qurans. And we said, oh, this Quran is this, this Quran is this, this Quran is this. So uh, early Muslims had their own Quran they were reciting, but as the time went on, those Qurans got missing. <laughs> that, that's just uh, that's just a miracle. Um, and then even the way um, Shadi Nasr expresses, even the way Muslims were reciting the Quran was in different structure, verses were different. And then we do have Mr. Muslim in the chat. Um, Islamic Dawa Gang expresses, I put his comment on the chat as he expresses this as a miracle. Oral recitation did not have dot or any vowel at that time. And he thinks that is a miracle. Um, <laughs> what does he mean oral recitation? Because if, if it's oral, we're not talking about text. So there's no dotting. If it's oral, like as I'm talking to you right now, there are vowels in my words yeah. and my and syllables. So I don't, I don't. Maybe he's, maybe he's the, not reading the miracle. The miracle is, the miracle is that um, this particular Dawa gang mixed up what writing is with what sound is in his statement. That's the miracle. And yeah, if it's all, I think. Dots in your speech. <laughs> yeah, you don't, you don't put dots when you talk. But if that's the case, uh, then what about what uh, Ibn Masoud recited? And what about what um, Ubay ibn Kaab recited? It's all, there was no dots then, but they both recited different things. So where's the miracle I'm not following? Uh, right, um, which one came from Muhammad? Out of all of those differences that we have, which one of those? Uh, yeah, do you have... it's, it's one of the one of the... Sorry? Sorry. Uh... Do you have any proof that this oh, oral... I, I thought I froze. <laughs> oh, sorry. I was just saying to that gentleman, do you have any proof that that oral recitation, can you download it from the 7th century so you can prove to us that it's what Muhammad recited? Where's the miracle that you're talking about? Yeah, I, I apologize. I think there's a... Sorry, I think there's an audio lag on here. So we're accidentally like talking over each other, but I apologize for that. Uh, um, I just wanted to, just wanted to say that if you're going to claim that all of these are all of these are well, actually you know i don't even know what he's claiming here I, so i have to wait for him to clarify the statement before he before i comment further okay um yeah yeah can you just clarify what you are making a case um, what i understood was because they didn't have the dots and vowels therefore um you can have like many different ways of the one word and certain muslims are thinking that's a miracle so that's what I am kind of thinking. I see that as like messed up, but um, apparently certain Muslims think that's a miracle. Yeah, I mean, we know that we know after Uthman, after Uthman, the Quran is based on an oral, uh, sorry, an oral tradition and a textual tradition. I almost made the mistake. I was reading his comment. <laughs> um, 
so we know after Uthman, the Quran is based on a textual tradition as well as an oral tradition. So you can't depart, you can't say that the oral tradition, Uthman didn't go out of his way to burn these differences, different Qurans. He didn't go out of his way to burn all these things and then to create um, all the, the, you know, the Uthmanic codices or codex um, to just have the text be ignored. So the text plays into your tradition if you're trying to deny that. Okay, um, I'm just trying to find the list actually um, of the, um, I, I've got a list of, I think over 45, according to Islamic tradition, like the, the verses we put down, sorry, the difference, we made short, we made short videos with the, from the different Arabic Qurans and how oh, okay. uh, Sahabas of Muhammad or companions of Muhammad were kind of using certain words. In that, um, I mm. believe we had a list of uh, over 45, um, over 45 Qurans. I'm just trying to get that list, but my computer... Um, as you pull it up, I just I just remember this point that, that Charlie Nasser was making. Yeah. He was saying, like, there's this doctrine of abrogation in the Quran. And if this doctrine, you know, there are like these, there are different types of abrogation, but one of the abrogation, one of the, one of the, one of the types of abrogation is that it's no longer in the Quran. And, and Shadi Nasser is saying there was a point for these particular types of abrogation. So where maybe the ruling still exists, but it's no longer in the Quran or it's neither in the Quran or whatever, or the ruling doesn't exist, which is whatever, you know, there's like three different ones. He's saying the ones that used to be in the Quran that are no longer in the Quran. There was a point in time where they were in the Quran. They were part of Muhammad's Quran. So he's saying when that time period existed, when they were part of the Quran, we can't know what Muhammad's Quran actually was. And we can know that we don't actually have his Quran because we don't know what these missing verses in that, that are now abrogated. That's another point that he was making. Yeah, so that's the, I think in his mind, um, he's talking about um, these adult breasts suckling versus stoning the adultery. Those exactly. Birth, I think he's talking yeah, exactly. about, yeah. So he's so, so we don't have that Quran of Muhammad. We don't have that because that's no longer in the Quran today. So we don't have his Quran. Yeah. Um, sorry, brother. So I have a list of... Um, 47 Qurans according to Islamic tradition so far when we did put up short videos um, on the different Arabic Qurans we went through 47 different Arabic Qurans here is the list so those Qurans were used at the in early Islamic tradition sorry I, I am very much aware that it's very small list but this is what I have so that those Qurans were used in early Islamic tradition but miracle happened and then somehow they got lost <laughs> we don't have them anymore yeah um so those do are you remember um do you remember some stream uh one some stream ago <laughs> that, some stream back uh we, we we did a stream and we talked about chapter one verse four where yeah. maliki yomadin versus maliki yomadin okay now i remember we talked about how there's this one encyclopedia of the different readings of the quran and it, it lists, if I remember correctly, at least 18, at least 18 variants for just this one word. Yeah. So we, we have at least 18 for just this one word in, 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 in one chapter. So imagine that. Imagine that there's 18 different variations for just one word in one verse in one chapter. I mean, imagine if like you multiply that times how many like i'm not saying there are 18 variations for every single word in the quran but what i'm saying is for this particular word there were 18 variations for it so if if you were to multiply that and multiply that and multiply that by all of the different variations that are recorded in these encyclopedias of the canonical and non-canonical um readings then that you know that 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 would be a huge number of like readings of the quran yeah, and um, if you remember, um, in one of the teaching, Shadi Nasir is showing people, making people to listen different recitation of Surah Fatiha. That means, uh, and in that, I think it was over seven different um, versions of recitation was kind of practiced 
that was like in when they're like recording stuff kind of end up in history beginning of 1900s probably so those different versions of the quran was being still recited just like last century um and i don't i don't see this uh, because it didn't have the dots therefore this is the miracle of allah stating such a thing is simply just like really bad in a sense those because it didn't have the dots, therefore we get to see how Muslims are disagreeing with one another and how they are making their decision what should be there. That's not a positive thing, that's a negative thing, dear Mr. Muslim. Um, anything else to add, Dot of Christ? No, you can continue, sister. Okay. Is another comment. Sorry, I'll just pick this comment from Mr. Muslim. Um, I, I saw that too. So. Okay. Um. It is my duty to gather it in your chest and to establish its recitation on your tongue. It is Allah who yeah. destined a Quran to be collected. Well, <laughs> if it's his duty, he failed his duty. <laughs> <laughs> because... I was going to say, you just proved that Islam was false. Thank you for... Uh, so maybe he he escaped the, yeah. the Dawah team and now he's on another team. I don't know which but team. Remember, he, but he, he just says, proved to us. He, he did say, if the Quran is false. So we don't know where exactly where he stands at the moment. <laughs> I, maybe, I he's try, maybe he's trying to prove it. <laughs> just, uh, I'm sorry, this mm. might be maybe because I'm like female and I might be confused in this reading this. Um, mm -hmm. So... Is he saying Allah collected the Quran? It's it is Allah who it. destined to the Quran to be collected. It is my duty to gather it. So yeah, and he's writing a clarification, a clarification comment. He's like saying last, Allah is one. Who, huh? Yeah, last, last said, time when I checked, it was like last time when I checked, it was um, Muslims um, who were collect trying to figure out how to collect the Quran. Right, <laughs> but, but sister, the verse says the verse says it's my duty to establish it in your chest and recitation on your tongue. He's talking to Muhammad only. He didn't say the Muslim. Muhammad died. Mm. Well, Muhammad's, say... Muhammad's chest yeah. was very busy with other things. He couldn't memorize it. He couldn't protect it, and Allah didn't help him. Yeah, Allah thought, you know what? Let's put a miracle in. Remove the dots so they don't know what I'm talking. Don't know which which <laughs> word is which. <laughs> that is how I'm going to establish my duty. And that co just side information where it says like cause uh, cause the reason to unite as he wish. Um, I think because of the recitation of the Quran, Muslims were imprisoned. They have been tortured, tortured, and I don't think that's uniting anyone at all as well as Sunnis and Shays are disagree disagreed in early days regarding what happened to over 10,000 verses. Shias, while you believe that were Quran revealed as 17,000 verses versus Sunnis as 6,236 verses. It doesn't look like any uniting action is taking here beside more divisions mm. and more divisions. Yeah, plus yeah, yeah but, and by uh, the way, yeah, just look at the verse in Arabic too. It it doesn't say anything about in your heart or anything like that. Allah is saying that it's upon us to gather, to to gather, um, basically the Quran or whatever. So 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 it's not it's not saying like even it's gonna be preserved on on Muhammad or anything like that. It's not even saying that. It's just saying like it's up to Allah to to uh, collect to collect it. So I don't know what translation Yahya is using. Allah, but, Allah uh, didn't. Yeah. Uh, Yahya is Arabic speaker. Allah didn't do a very good job. Allah. Yeah, didn't well, do well very Yahya, good you, you should know better that this the translation you're using is is not in the Arabic. What you said. Uh, and Yahya, what what unity are you talking about? You yourself said that the Wash Quran is false, and if you went to uh, Maghrib, they'll kill you. So what unity are you talking about? <laughs> I don't know why he's making a comment on here about the Bible because he sent me a message to say Bible is the word of God, reliable word of God. But now he's now accusing Bible again. Yeah, yeah. Make decisions, Mr. Muslim. Please make your decision. Um, 
Okay, so um, let's continue with the video. Sorry for that distraction, if it caused distraction, but I just thought we pick up what is the command. Um, shall we continue? Yes. Yeah, sure. Reasonable doubt uh, that the compilation of the Quran was done accurately. And <laughs> uh, more or less, they follow the same structure, mm -hmm. but there are differences. So you can't say it's 100% all the codices were similar. No one says that. Okay. We don't know. We don't have manuscripts. Muslims actively reported about that. And they, they themselves say that there were the codices were different. Can it be proven beyond reasonable doubt uh, that the compilation of the Quran was done accurately? And <laughs> the short answer we can't know, right? Yeah, so what yeah. does it mean accurately? Again, so what does it mean? What is accurate and what is what is the what's not accurate? So what would how could it be that we have done this process correctly? Mm -hmm. The result needs to match the uh, the goal. Okay, so our goal is to collect the Quran. So did we collect the Quran exactly as the prophet was reciting it? We don't know. The arrangement of the chapters, according to a consensus by Muslim scholars, it was done, the companions decided the arrangement. Mm -hmm. There are problems with verses in, in, in which they were put in the chapters where sometimes you feel they are out of context. Mm -hmm. Okay, the verses. So, okay, what, what is this verse doing here? And it's very, it's very clear. I mean, this is a problem uh, atta tackled by exegetes. They're trying to understand what is the relationship of this verse to that verse. Sometimes the pronouns completely shift. Uh, the story completely shifts. It seems that when you read through the book from the beginning to the end, mm -hmm. uh, it doesn't seem like... Uh, it consistently stays on it, it is that it, it is not focused no on. i mean you you are right but it it maybe it wasn't supposed to okay yeah. i would it would be very surprisingly to read the quran as if you are reading the bible i mean mm -hmm. that's one of the problems we have in teaching the quran it's very easy to teach the bible you go from chronologically right mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. it's our genesis exodus it's, 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 it's just, you go it's smooth it's a story the Quran mm -hmm. is not a story. It's not supposed to be a historical record. Mm -hmm. Okay, so it's selections of liturgical text being recited, put together. But the uh, the issue is that you have to understand that the Quran came in a period where composition and books were not the norm or the custom. Mm -hmm. So it's the same thing with Arabic poetry. If you read early Arabic poetry, read it in translation there are many translations it's the same thing it doesn't follow a story from beginning to end you would have verses scattered and just being compiled in one poem i, I could uh yeah. based on this idea say that the quran was a product of its time it's it is a product of its time yeah. of course there is a trend also in in, in the tradition not all of it that mm -hmm. uh, the quran is uh, is old it's already written in the in the preserved tablet and a trend in the Islamic tradition mm -hmm. that say, well, everything was ordained, everything was mm -hmm. predetermined, the text is perfect as is. But uh, again, these opinions, they don't have a, they are just, let's say, trends or opinions by scholars out of piety, mm -hmm. out of trying to polish the narrative. But Muslim scholars, exegetes, etc., they already notice that many, most of the Quran, it is a product of its time. No one mm -hmm. escapes from that from that reality, including the way, including the way it was arranged. And uh, also, we have to pay attention to how thoughts about Islam by Muslims it's it changed over time throughout the whole Quran and traditions. You know, the <coughs> Prophet is struggling to get divine revelation. He's even struggling with, 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 with the devil. But mm -hmm. speaking of abrogation, there are also many opinions that abrogation doesn't necessarily have to do with abrogation. It's about the devil sometimes inspiring, you know, trying to put some verses doing waswasa, right? Um, it's a very controversial topic that we have had. Yeah, it was, but it was very normal in the early <laughs> yeah. period. So uh -huh. you read early exegetes and opinions by scholars, 
uh, that's what it meant. Mm -hmm. Uh, we are guarding the Quran from the interference of the devil. Mm -hmm. uh, you are a true prophet. Don't worry. This is speech to to, to Muhammad, right? Yeah. But then, in the the tradition later on, completely, almost switched the the narrative that the prophet is he doesn't commit mistakes. Yeah, yeah. Uh, verses. The satanic verses. Yeah. yeah. The satanic uh, verses. The interference of the of the devil, and even it's uh, when the prophet was not receiving revelation, he he would he would get uh, very depressed, yeah. uh, confused, um, uh, desperate. Um, but then the narrative changes later on mm -hmm. uh, because Muslims start to have a new understanding or different understanding of how things were. To refute that the Quran was invented by a, a person or persons other than Muhammad. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it goes both way. I mean, also we un we we answered that shortly before is that we don't we don't know what happened before mm -hmm. Uthman. Mm -hmm. Or before the collection of the codices okay so it might be if we if we want to talk objectively okay so it, it might be this person who was called muhammad or it could be another person islamic history teaches us that muslims never agreed on on anything <laughs> right and they have yeah, been there fighting was much schism from the very beginning from the very beginning since the prophet died and even before he died mm -hmm. there are many factions within islam and each faction has its factions. So many people have different uh, objectives trying to prove or disprove something about the prophecy. About mm -hmm. So you have one line, people trying to understand Islam uh, within its context, late antiquity, who Muhammad was, uh, was there a Muhammad? Uh, these, these are all what kind of person he was. Mm -hmm. um, was he really a prophet? Was he receiving something or was he just a politician? It's legitimate line of investigation. Mm -hmm. uh, maybe he was receiving revelation from aliens <laughs> and Jibril was a hologram. And, you know, the Burak was a, star, a, a starship. There are you know, some, some people who wrote some, mm -hmm. not in academia, but uh, if you read Islamic history on that light, you would be amazing. It's almost science fiction, right? That is a very interesting perspective. <laughs> yeah, I mean, uh, sometimes you read these narratives when 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 the prophet saw Gabriel, you know, he was stretching from from sky to earth. You think, oh wow, it's a hologram, okay? Uh, <laughs> hearing voices, maybe he was, I don't know, zooming, right? And mm -hmm. uh, someone was zooming with him and uh, teaching him the Quran. I'm making things up now, but I'm saying that if we prove that, if someone can, okay, well, we prove that the Quran came from Martians or from aliens. This doesn't help me to understand how Muslims understood the Quran in the past 1400 years. Exactly, yeah. I know you will have a problem with the word miraculous here. Okay, um, let's pause here because there were lots of lots of things in that. I think I will play this part in a bit again to make sure we all understood and we didn't miss anything. So. This is the production of man. So question was, um, where is the completion of the Quran? Is it accurate or not? And then simple answer to that was no. Uh, did we collect the Quran in the way Muhammad recited? Answer to that was no. Um, and then he talked about how poor Muhammad, he was struggling to get the revelation. It wasn't because life was too hard, <laughs> because there was no one and nothing to give him the revelations. And then he talked about the struggles with the devil and then went on and went on. Um, gentlemen's first, but before that, um, I just put a comment on the screen. If anyone wants to make a response to that comment, and then we go with gentleman, gentleman first principle. Okay. Yeah, um, yeah, he, like you said, he said a lot. Um, just, just remind me of the first point one more time because there's something I was going to say to that, but I just I lost so my train that I was yeah. reading the comment. <laughs> first point, first point was um, the completion of the Quran. The question was to ask to him the completion of the Quran is this accurate or not? So that was the ah uh, right right question. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, 
Yeah, it, it just goes back to what we were talking about earlier, like compiling the Quran, which Quran, even even like back, like back then, there's so many different companions who have different readings, so many different things. So which Quran, uh, I think, I think after Uthman, like this is another period of we can like, after this period, there's something that we can look at and say, okay, this, if you can trace things back to that period, but before Uthman, this is like, the question that he's really getting at, like, what did Muhammad, how did he actually recite the Quran? And then when it was compiled, um, what, how many different versions of the Quran was there then? It seems there were so many. Um, so, yeah, just to be, just to be brief on that point. Okay, thought of Christ? Um, sister, he said, it's very easy to teach the Bible. I know that. Was... And... <laughs> yeah. Quran is not the same. Uh, there you go. It just sh goes to show that the author of the Bible is not the author of the Quran, because otherwise it would have read the similar or at least the same. Uh, yes, when you read the Bible, it's like reading the uh, words of a sane person. You know what's happening. You know the context. You know what period you're uh, talk. You he's talking about. You know what person he's talking about. In the Quran, it talk, it's it's like a schizophrenic, confused, desperate person, which is what he said Muhammad was, sister, when he was struggling for revelation. You don't know who's talking to who. The pronouns change. The subject changes suddenly. Uh, it reads like a poem, but with no structure, no aim, no beginning, middle, and end. It reads like a mad person, sister. So um, I'm very glad that our scripture is the Bible, sister, and not this these... Um, Utter these the, the, these feverish utterings of this uh, illiterate prophet who was confused and desperate for revelations and sometimes influenced by the devil with his own admission. Go on, sister. Um, it, it, it's amazing in that point he expressed like teaching um, teaching Quran is problematic, and a couple of years ago I read an article where someone was uh, there was a point like Shadi Nasser even said like. What is this verse is doing here? A um, couple of years ago, um, I read an article. Someone was asking the same question on Surah 74. He was asking the question of what is verse 31 is doing in Surah 74. So it's like, it's all kind of nice short sentences and in certain contexts. And then you come to verse 31. Everyone is just like, oh, what is this doing? And then, um, Shabir Ali kind of commented on that as expressing actually 30 and 31 is there in a sense to make a, a case for the miracle number 19. Um, that was like so funny, but yeah, so there is, yes, there are articles are written simply asking the basic question, what is this verse is doing in this chapter? Um mm. Brother Jai, um, any comments on um, how Muhammad was, um, this, like, uh, the Quran is the production of the man, and also um, how uh, Muhammad was struggling to get the revelation and his fight with devil as well as, he didn't mention, but even um, there is a point, Caliph Umar steps in as father-in-law of Muhammad to contribute into the Quran. Um, do you want to make any point on those points brother yeah sure so there are a lot of times through the history of muhammad's uh false prophethood where he would struggle to get revelation and as you said there were times when he would get revelation from from people like sometimes he would have a scribe that would say something and he would say oh that sounds nice why don't you write that <laughs> And then he would, you know, then he would have, he would hear, um, like you said, like um, you'd have uh, different, different companions and family members of Muhammad who in different situations would say like, you know, my Lord agreed with me in four things. And then all of those things became, you know, one of these things is, is now uh, part of the Quran. So it, it, which, which, which story we read determines like you know like the comments you have on the screen here or the one before that um there are contradictory reports throughout muslim tradition and muslims are the first ones to say that they have so many false hadith and so many false sayings like they're the ones telling us that we can't trust them 
and we can't trust what they say about their 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 Quran or their prophet or anything like that. So we're just trying to find a story, find some consistency, and it seems like it seems like Muhammad in this particular instance would just kind of get his stories from different people, different companions, different people in his life, and then it just became part of his, you know, holy book. Okay, any comments on um, Ibn Masud and Ubay bin Kaab, where one of them has 111 chapters, other one has 116 chapters, versus current Quran contains 114 chapters. Uh, Mr. Muslim is simply saying, actually, their Quran was the same. Any comments on that, brother or sister? Yeah, um, we'll go ahead, daughter, of course, if you want to say anything. Uh it doesn't matter what they had. Neither of them are your Quran today. <laughs> okay. <laughs> they were all burnt. Actually, Ibn Mas'ud uh, survived for a little bit in Iraq and then that disintegrated. So um, we all know Ibn Mas'ud uh, was opposed to the uh, committee sister that uh, Uthman had to uh, compile the Quran. We all know that he was not in that committee. He was alienated. Um, he was fought about it, uh, even though uh, sister both him and Ubay, Ibn Mas'ud and Ubay, were one of the two of the four that Muhammad said, get your Quran from. Uh, and also, um, actually, he I think is one of his previous comments about Al-Qara' al amma the common reading. Uh, who, who, who told you that common reading is what Muhammad uh, recited? Also, remember, they broke it the isn't. hips of Ibn Mas'ud regarding because he was simply objecting yeah. the Quran of um, Quran yes. of Muhammad. Mm -hmm. But um, it yeah, is yeah, your yeah. most reliable Islamic sources simply tells us that their Quran were different and then even um, there is a book, uh, which one is that? Let me just, uh, not that one. Nadim, um, um, Ibn mm -hmm. al-Nadim's book, it's even talking about the giving you the, what are the differences in them, like giving um, all the differences stuff, not all, but giving, the, giving you the differences. Um, and even I've got a list, I can put that up. Um, so if you are simply telling me, oh, you've got some narrations, I think this is the same Mr. Muslim who still owes us the name of the Surah 9, verse 28 and 29. Oh, yeah, but, the names. Uh, but anyway, so um, we do have um, those references. So if you are saying, oh, yeah. you've got sources which kind of says they are weak, yet there are other sources which kind of comes to us from most reliable Islamic tradition, all we will have is we cannot trust Islam because one says one way, another says another way. Which one is more mm -hmm. trustworthy? You choose yeah. and pick like you go and do cherry picking. It's not acceptable. Uh, if you yeah, have the so, source, so. sorry, if you have the source that says they were both the same, please tell us the source. I challenge you. Give me a source where it says Ibn uh, Ubay Ibn Kab and Mas'ud's uh, Quran was the same. And uh, Sister uh, Shadi Nasser said that some of the Shawaz readings, not the common readings, they belong to Muhammad. Muhammad had some of the Shawaz readings. And when the Uthmani text came in, they disregarded even the readings that they were sure came from the mouth of Muhammad because they differed with the Uthmani text. Not good, not good. Holes in so the narrative. So your Qur'an, your common recitation doesn't mean anything. Okay. Jai, thank you, sister. Yeah, I just, I just, I just want to say we, we, we actually have their, their readings where like they would differ. These two particular individuals you mentioned, given Masood and Uwai ibn Kaab, we actually have these um, within Muslim tradition. We're not making, like this is not coming from Christians. These are coming from you Muslims where it says, Ubay would read the would read the verse this way. Then Abdullah would read the verse. Abdullah bin Masood would read the verse this way. And and we and we have we have those writings. We have like so many different examples where they would read the verses in <clears throat> excuse me in different ways. So to say that they're the same, that they're the same reading, or that there's a you know a common reading of the people or something like that, like that that is just mystical mystical thinking. I mean, this is not uh, this is not the reality of the evidence. If you examine the evidence. The evidence tells us that they had different readings and and you won't find anything that says that there is only one only one no no all of the all of these books that you're that you're referencing that say that there's one they contradict each other 
they these same sources these same authors also claim that they are you know multiple readings the ahru for the Qur'an or whatever the whatever period they lived in they would say that there are multiple readings different readings yeah and other thing is like ubay bin Kaab. Let's say sake of the argument, which is not true, I'm going to show it to you now, but sake of the argument, if Ubay bin Kaab and Ibn Masud were agreeing regarding what is in their sources and saying it is exactly the same, they were disagreeing with Zaid bin Tabit. So turn with me to Surah 33, verse, uh, uh, where is it? Verse 6, and then you've got footnote, even in like current Quran, half Quran, you got the footnote, and in the footnote for the three thousand six hundred seventy-four footnote um, for Surah thirty-three verse six, Yusuf Ali simply tells us Ubay bin Kaab's Quran was different from the Zaid bin Tabit, and then he explains what was the difference. So even if they agreed with one another, Ubay bin Kaab and Ibn Masud agreed with one another. They disagreed with Zayed bin Tabit's Quran, not because um, people had a broken hips, all those kind of things, but um, because they simply disagreed. They had different Qurans and they simply disagreed. Um, let me point it out here. Actually, I've got the footnote, which you will be able to see on the screen. Um, okay. Um, sorry, I will just, I'm going to share screen. Uh, beloved ones, don't forget, timeline is 15.40, okay? I will ask you once okay. we come to the uh, main thing, okay? Sorry, I'm just going to do setup in here. Now let's get rid of this command, nothing personal. Um, we need to get rid of this as well. Okay, so um, on the this needs to move down. So on the screen, you've got um, today's Quran versus Ubay bin Kaab's Quran. Um, let me just make sure. So let's start from here. Let's start from here. So. Today's Quran versus Ubay bin Kaab's Quran. These are just very, very basic examples on some differences. You you can all see them. And then here's another kind of examples which kind of should concern us all. 1924 Quran, Hafs Quran versus Ubay bin Kaab's. For example, Surah 92, verse 1. Um, in um, Ubay bin Kaab's Quran, it, it has extra... It has extra and says, by the night when I, uh, I can't pronounce that word, but anyway, the day when it is bright and the male and the female, the unbelievers have li lied and they will be punished. So that part, see this part? The unbelievers have lied and they will be punished. That is not in today's Quran. That is not in today's Quran. Surah 33, verse 6, I was reading to you. It's also in the footnote of Yusuf Ali's Quran, footnote 3674. Um, it adds the word as, and he is their father. So that is not in Zayd bin Tabit's Quran. Today, you might say, oh, yeah, Ibn, Ibn Masud and Ubay bin Kaab agreed with one another. Actually, no. Like, I'll, I'm going to get you that example. Just give me... Um, okay, he's a, he's a better picture for the um, people to see Ubay, Ubay bin Kaab's Quran. Um, footnote for Ubay bin Kaab's Quran, but let me get the uh, Zaid bin Tabit's Quran. Okay, here's the example of Zaid bin Tabit's Quran. Let me look at in the list. In the list, I don't have Surah 33, verse 6, agreeing with um, Ibn Masud. No, I don't have it. Um, Ibn Masud's Quran is, again, different from with Zaid bin Tabit's Quran, and this is all 
Islamic tradition is telling me it's not like turning out of blue or out of pink. So don't kind of fall into that trap when Muslim tells you um, their Quran was different even. Yeah. Um, so just checking um, to make sure that yeah, I've got kind of list here we can go through, but no need. So, um, it, yeah, according to the Islamic tradition, their, their Quran were different. Even if it is the same, that Quran is still different with um, today's Quran. So that's another point Mr. Muslim seems to respond. Sorry, sister. Uh, yes, sister. He keeps... He's only got like this one quote that he keeps recycling all the time, even when we've showed him with evidence so many times that it's false. Like so uh, He says that, uh, as Sulami says that uh, the Qara'at of Al-Ansar and um, Al-Muhajirun were the same, the companions were the same. I told you so many times, as Sulami himself read, read a different Quran, and that's according to your favorite scholar Suyuti in his book, Dur al-Mansur, he read, you know, Dua al-Qunut, which is not in the Quran today. Remember that video that I did to refute you? Go back to it. You'll see. He said that that Dua al Qunut, he read it as the Quran and he taught it to Muslim as the Quran. This that so as Sulami had a different Quran from, from you today. So whatever Sulami said doesn't matter. Whatever Quran they had is different from what you had today. And on the same page, it talks about the royal family at the time, sister the Umayyads. They were reading a different Quran from each other, talking about it, saying, oh, well, Ali ibn Abi Talib, Muhammad's own cousin, he read that as part of the Quran as well. And then Muslims came and took it out of the Quran. And now it's just a dua, a supplication. It's not in the Quran anymore. So stop recycling the same thing again and again. Your astolami means nothing because he read a different Quran than you. Go check out al Suyuti's book, al Durr al-Mansur. Okay, volume 13, you'll find it there. That's what I want to say to him, sister, because he comes and just recycles the same nonsense that I, I told him about on streams so many times before. Sister, don't get angry. Um, reputation is important. It takes like reputation after reputation after reputation for information to sink into mind. Why? Because their mom told them different story. Their father told them the different story. Imam, Sheikhs, other dawah gangs, they all told them different story. So they are hearing those things from you first time. Therefore, it is all right to kind of repeat the same thing. But he's dawah gangs. He's not just a normal Muslim. And he he's on autopilot when we've told him the answer so many times before. And then on the number 100th time, he comes and says the same thing again. Even though I sh we showed him on the screen what Suyuti said, the reference that he gave us, we showed him, it showed that your Quran isn't preserved. He was using the same source to say the Quran is preserved. Makes you want to pull your hair out. You need to do better than that, uh, our best. And you need to have references that actually mean something and put it in historical context. For the hundredth time, your Asulami means nothing. If you want to go by him, go find his Quran. You'll find that it's different from you today. Don't make me angry again. I'll do another video against you. Uh, go on, sister. <laughs> Why are you laughing, Brother Jai? I want to do another video against him. I think it's funny. <laughs> um, so he, he thinks that he's like, what he's doing is he's actually refuting his own, his own, his own scholars. Like he's actually, he's not arguing with us. He's arguing against his own scholars. This is the beauty. Like you're not arguing against daughter of Christ. You're not arguing against sister Hatun. You're arguing against your own scholars so that you're the companions of your prophet. Those are the ones you're arguing against because those are the ones who said that the Quran came in seven huruf and then later on we have the Qur'an afterwards. So this is your own your own Muslims, Muslim scholars that you're arguing against. And on the and, screen uh, on the yeah. screen now he's defending Ubay bin Kaab and his students. But you don't have Ubay bin Kaab's Quran. Like why are we defending him? You need to defend Zayd bin Tabit against everyone else. You are not reciting Ubay bin Kaab's Quran. Like even today's Quran with the footnote of Yusuf Ali tells us, actually, no, we don't have a bin Kaab's Quran. And that footnote, you might think, oh, it's just a footnote, but it does change the theology. 
it does change the phenology because it is in the context talking about the uh, adoption, which Mr. Mohammed comes and then gets rid of it. Like, please, please, please. And uh, I'm not aware of the Quran which came to you from Abu Hurara. And where are the names? Where are the Again, names? They, they come approximately 200 years after uh, after Muhammad, which is upset that we are telling people to ha- in around 900s, think this, around 900s, in the library they are talking about, I am seeing those Qurans physically. Three, 200 years after Muhammad, 300 years after Muhammad, Qurans were circulating around and they were physical in the libraries. And they were able to make their way until like another person comes and then disgrades them. Now you are having problem with someone is telling you those 200 years, yet same Bukhari which you pick and choose tells you the same information 200 years after that. And same Muslims are telling you actually you don't have Ubay bin Kaab's Quran as well as you don't have Ibn Masud's Quran. The Quran you have caused Today, the Quran you are reciting caused people to be hospitalized and walk around with the broken hips. Just not good argument, not good argument. I should set up a class like how to teach Muslims to defend Islam. Sometimes I do a better job than them, seriously. Like. It's like you're trying to defend their religion. They're like, no, 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 this religion you're telling us has nothing to do with Islam. Right? Yeah, I, it's like, almost... I, I was speaking with a scholar last week. Um, Muslim scholar, he kind of doesn't follow Quran its fullness. I was like telling him the Quranic verses why he's supposed to be following Quran and Muhammad. And then he was just like, Are you sure you are not Muslim? <laughs> it's 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 shame. Like I like you have to step in to just simply head them out with those very basics. Anyway, um on the Shadi Nasir. Anything Mm, anything we can add? Uh, I'm just going to read the source that I taught our best about. Okay, in that case, give him time to just breathe out, because, breathe in, so he can focus on listening. And breathe out and breathe in, yeah? Go to Ad-Dur al-Mansur by your favorite, by your favorite scholar, Suyuti. Volume 15, page 814 and 815. Uh, it says, someone is saying to Abdul Aziz ibn Marwan, who is the brother of the Khalif at the time? What are you reading? You are reading what I lo- what I am not reading in the Quran. He says, "What is that?" He says, "Al Qunut," which is the du'a. Uh, Ali, uh, Ali ibn Abi Talib, Muhammad's cousin. Yeah, he said that it is, it is from the Quran. That sister is not in the Quran today. It continues to say, Abu Abdurrahman al Sulami was reading the same as the Quran when it isn't in the Quran today. So Ali, Ali ibn Abi Talib was reading it as the Quran. And as Sulami, his favorite person, who was apparently saying everything is the same, was reading something and teaching it to Muslims, not from the Quran. Dur al-Mansur, Ba Suyuti, volume 15, page 814 to 815. Okay. Give the reference again, sister. Dur al-Mansur, Ba Suyuti, Volume 15, page 814 to 815. Your favorite Sulami is reading something in the Quran that you're not reading today. It's called Dua Al-Qunut. All right. And he, it says in the, in the last uh, sentence of the account, he claimed that Muhammad himself told them it was from the Quran. Where is it now? Not in the Quran anymore. It's about four or five verses, sister. It's a long, um, longish Dua. If you ever mention the Sulami to me again, Abbas, you're going to get this again. Okay? Just a warning to you. Okay. okay. That's, I think, clear as it comes. Um, anything um, anyone wants to add on um, Shadi Nasir and Muhammad's struggle that he couldn't get the divine revelation, all that? Um, or we kind of moved on? You can move on, Hati. Okay. Yeah, we can go on to the other part. 
this is this is this, i think this is the part where he's going to start talking about the language aspect right daughter i think so the linguistic my memory is correct yeah okay so we were at 15 1540. thank you i was just gonna ask where we were okay let me find that part 1540. Uh-huh. <laughs> I'm trying to put it in a context uh, that we can evaluate it from a uh, academic professional perspective. Which but doesn't if... occur in the Quran, by the way, the, the oh, word miraculous. Okay. So okay. I didn't actually prove that the Quran yeah. came f- from Martians or from aliens. This doesn't help me to understand how Muslims understood the Quran in the past 1400 years. Exactly, yeah. I know you will have a problem with the word miraculous here, but uh-huh. <laughs> I'm trying to put it in a context uh, that we can evaluate it from a uh, academic professional perspective. Which but doesn't if... occur in the Quran, by the way, the, the oh, word miraculous, okay. so. Okay, I didn't actually go into that. I mean, the, the, the whole notion of uh-huh. jazz, it just came later, but uh-huh. it's not, uh-huh. it's not a, uh, the term isn't there, so okay. yeah. So the question would be: Can the Quran be considered uh, unique, miraculously unique, mm-hmm. in terms of its uh, literary qualities and its uh, content? Is it incomparable to other texts? It is unique, but it is not miraculously unique. <laughs> okay, so okay. every text is unique. It's not just because it's the Quran. The, the collection of poetry by Mutanabbi is also unique. Mm-hmm. For example, a famous Arab poet. Mm-hmm. Uh, every text is unique, but the Quran is definitely unique that there are, there are no similar texts mm-hmm. uh, in terms of content uh, and style, more or less. Style uh, in, in how it was compiled and, and not necessarily the register of, of Arabic, but just its style. Now, miraculous, again, is very loaded word, and not all Muslims, Muslim scholars, not just talking about lay Muslims, thought that the style of the Quran was miraculous. Again, mm-hmm. the concept developed over time. So can the Quran be considered superior in terms of literary qualities? Okay, let's pause that. Um, is Quran um, miracul- miraculously unique? answer is no <laughs> right yeah yeah um and and he mentions uh, a famous arab poet al mutanabbi who was believed or i if i remember he claimed to be a prophet right daughter or, or his followers think he was a prophet or something but he mm-hmm. he did something that was comparable to the quran oh yeah yeah this is what he did he <laughs> he would talk about how his poetry was even superior to the Quran and so it's fascinating that you have um, throughout throughout history Arab history Arab, um, I'm not think, thinking the right word to use but let's just say throughout uh, history of the Arabic speakers we have um, people who would often challenge the Quran on its miraculous nature based on the language that it uses Um, sister, he just destroyed the Quran. He said, it's not miraculously unique, it's unique, but every text is unique. So I can write something now. It's not miraculous, but it's unique. So what is the Quran? It's just something that someone wrote, right? If I'm following correctly the logic. So when um, your dear Muslim friends tell your Quran is miraculously unique, with all this, all you are saying to him, say, you are, all you are going to say to them is actually, nope. Nope at all. I must say he's answering the correct, correct answer to all the questions, Hati. And brother. No to everything. <laughs> no to nope. everything, yeah. No to everything. And uh, the word miracle is not in the Quran, yeah. The Quran doesn't say I'm a miracle. Muslim says... Right. Mir- and it never defines... Sorry, go ahead. No, go on, brother. 
I was just, I was just gonna say, it never defines what it means to produce a, ch a chapter or surah like it. It never defines that. So not only does it not not claim to be miraculous, but never claims. And by the way, well, this is another topic. I'll go to that another time. But it, it never, it never makes the claim or it never gives the definition of what it means to produce something like it. And throughout history. Um, Muslims, different Muslims of different sects, different groups would define that differently in terms of what it means to produce something like it. Some groups would interpret that to mean not that this is to do with the language or linguistic miracles. Some of them said, no, it's about the areas of the Quran that speak about telling the future or something like that. So prophetic. So it's saying like produce something that's prophetic. And then other Muslims would object to that and say, so you're saying people can produce something that's like the Quran in the areas where it doesn't speak of the future or prophetic things. And so they, they go back and forth on this. But what I'm saying is because the Quran doesn't lay this out, because it's not clear in the Quran, we have different different um, Muslims through history interpreting that challenge in different ways. And just strictly based on the Quran, because it's so ambiguous on, not even, yeah, ambiguous is the right word to use because it just, it doesn't define it at all. It just says to produce something like it, but it never tells us how. Not good for our dear Muslim friends. Uh, and also, sister, there's lots of verses in the Quran where the polytheists, the unbelievers, they're saying to Muhammad, "Give us another, uh, uh, give us um, a miracle, a sign." Uh, he doesn't. He it, the verse then doesn't doesn't say, "Here is there's the sign." The Quran is a sign, or the Quran is a miracle. Right. Uh, yeah, you just reminded me, chapter 8, verse 31, you have the Quran quoting, uh, allegedly it's quoting the, the, the Quraysh, the, the pagan Arabs here, and it's saying, like, the Quran is just nothing but legends and tales of old, and if we wanted to produce something like it, we could. <laughs> They're actually saying that they could do that. So, however they understood the challenge, because the Quran is so ambiguous on this, it doesn't actually define what it is. The, the original audience who were first hearing this challenge were like, yeah, we could do it if we wanted to. But it seems they didn't have the interest or the will or desire to want to, to do it. So they weren't they weren't challenged by this. They were like, yeah, if we want to do it, we can. And and so they just like, this is just stories of old, legends of old. It's not impressive. Yeah, um, exactly. And one of those verses, sister, uh, is Surah 6, verse 109, um, where it says, they swear... They swear by Allah, the most solemn oaths, that if a sign were to come to them, they would certainly believe in it. So they were like swearing to him, just give us a sign, give us a miracle. What does Allah say to him, to them? Say, O Prophet, signs are only with Allah. So where is, Allah should have said, look, there's a Quran, there is a sign with you here. But the Quran actually says, admits that there is no sign and no miracle, and it doesn't define itself as a miracle to counteract their objections. Yeah, so that's a great time for Allah to communicate himself well in a sense. Okay, this is what they are asking. Let's deal with it. If you remember in the times of Prophet, Pro Prophet is saying, okay, let's let's see who is God is real God. And then real God turns up and brings fire in here. They are saying, okay, if this is, if you are Prophet, if you are doing miracles, all those kind of th things too. And even tradition tells us, Prophets before me did miracles, but you didn't believe in them. So why should I do it? Like, that's just easy to get away from that. Um, just disgraceful. Disgraceful. Mm -hmm. And, and the, the religious leaders, the Pharisees, the ones who rejected Jesus, they asked him for a sign. He said that they will be given a sign, the sign of Jonah. So, so over and over again through biblical history and sorry for the, the train in the background um just over and over again through through biblical history we have biblical prophets true prophets being challenged and they never make this claim that muhammad made yeah um i think one of the reasons like in today's now they are seeing actually anyway i'm not gonna verbalize it sorry i was just gonna justify why they are changing their arguments and going against what it was taught before but no need okay um shall i continue size yeah, let's continue. yes yeah uh, and style more or less style uh, 
and, and how it was compiled and, and not necessarily the register of, of Arabic, but just its style. Now, miraculous, again, it's very loaded word and not all Muslims, Muslim scholars, not just talking about lay Muslims, thought that the style of the Quran was miraculous. Again, mm -hmm. the concept developed over time. So can the Quran be considered superior in terms of literary qualities and content to any other book out there? I wouldn't say superior, but I would say that the Quran stylistically, it is very, it's written, composed in a very high register mm -hmm. of Arabic. It is used on the same level as Arabic poetry. Mm -hmm. There are many scholars, Arab scholars, who didn't think that the Quran stylistically is superior to other compositions. You read something, oh, well, this is miraculous or this is, superior. so what, what's miraculous about it? You have to feel it. You have to know Arabic. Okay, well, I know Arabic, but I still can't feel it. Mm -hmm. Well, it's very subtle. Really. It's not really something you can put your finger on. Uh -huh. uh, considering that the Quran makes a challenge and it says, uh, if they are truthful, then, uh, you know, uh, or uh, right. let, let them produce something like it or let them mm -hmm. produce something better. Uh, if I were to write a competing book to... Okay, let's pause here. I think he's moving to the next um, comment. Um, so is Quran better than every other books? No. <laughs> right answer again. Right. I think he actually is going to continue on the same topic. Oh, um, sorry. Yeah, I think he's going to continue on the same thought here. Okay, let's play it again. Sorry. This is the disadvantage of not watching the video. <laughs> let's see. Hey, mm -hmm. would it be possible to say that uh, this is objectively, so my book is objectively not equal to or better than the Quran? No, because you will, you will need 400 years for people to study your book <laughs> in order to, to reach. And then by that, that, by that time, the Quran would have 2,800 years of people studying it and it uh -huh. will always be, there's it's not going to happen i mean there's a there's a, a famous um, uh, arab uh, poet and writer he wrote a competing book in the mid 4th century that would be 10th century his name is abu al ala al maari very famous one of mm -hmm. um, like shakespeare in in, in english uh, and he wrote a book a thick book imitating the style of the Quran. It's published, it's available. It's called Al-Fusul wal Ghayat. If people uh, read Arabic on your channel, I want to check it out. Very eloquent. It's excellent masterpiece. And they asked him, uh, what happened? They are making fun of him after he wrote it and published it. So what happened to your Quran? Why, why didn't it become famous? He said, well, it wasn't polished in mosques for 400 years. <laughs> wow. <Well>. Right? <laughs> Issues of superiority in style. It, it no, you you. It's not going to be an an objective criterion where someone oh look I produced something. People will always poke holes mm -hmm. in whatever you write, uh, and there's no really objective criteria to say well this verse or this uh, poem is better than the other poem. And also the Quran when it produces, there are also many problems with that challenge. Okay, produce a book like it or a chapter like it, but it doesn't specify from which perspective yeah okay. that, that's the thing if you set a challenge without setting the 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 the, the rules uh, right so of the challenge then there and, is no and challenge that's what that's what muslim scholars debated but also this wasn't the case early on i mean you, you see in the past i would say 100 150 years uh, because this argument started to lose uh, favor mm -hmm. Why? Because many Muslims don't can't read the Quran in Arabic. Ninety-five percent of them, mm -hmm. they are not Arabs. Even Arabs who can read the Quran, they only understand the simple chapters. But even educated Arabs can't read it unless they really have decent education in, in Arabic to read it and appreciate it. So you started to to have this shifting narrative towards other miraculous issues in the Quran, mathematics, science, astrology to support the argument that it's miraculous all over, not just syntax. The Quran says in chapter 5, verse 15, okay. um, among others, that it is a uh, clear book. Would the Quran be considered clear? Okay, that, that was the part clear. Some of it is not clear. Okay, pause here.
Yeah, yeah. Uh, maybe even go back a little bit for when we return. But yeah, so th- so he just finished off the segment now about yeah. the challenge and and yeah. you know the linguistic challenge yeah. of the Quran. This is really funny. So, so he references. Like, uh, so are we dealing with the question? Is the Quran like um, higher than uh, superior to the uh, all other books? Where he expressed mm. it is high registered. I really don't know what is that means. <laughs> and then where um, come from there? Like you need four hundred years to study Quran to just get into it. And even Arabs who are not, who doesn't have decent education, they won't be able to understand the Quran. Um, it's just yeah. very much messed up. Yeah. Yes. So, so the part that I, one of the parts that I found to be really funny was this, uh, the the. Arab equivalent of the Shakespeare, the poet that he mentioned, and he said when he made a Quran or something like the Quran, and he was like being mocked by Muslims, and they were saying to him, like, well, why aren't there like, well, why didn't it catch on? Why didn't your book catch on like the Quran? And he's like, well, it has. I haven't had four hundred years like you guys have had <laughs> for Muslims to, you know, sing it in the mosques and to, you know, recite it and to to polish it and to make it better. So I think that's that's really interesting the way that uh, this plays out through history, these different challenges. So even if we were to produce a, 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 something like the Quran today, we, we need the same time limit as the Quran. <laughs> we would need like, uh, you know, give us like 1400 years to, or 400 years or whatever. Uh, and and but, no, notice yeah. guys, notice how the Quran was a team effort. Everybody knew what he was talking about when he said people polished it. Yeah. So why would people want exactly. to polish a perfect uh, Allah's words? It's interesting, sister um, and brother, that when he was talking about Abu Abu Ala Al Maari's book, the the one that he did the same as the Quran, he called this very eloquent and a masterpiece. He didn't use mm-hmm. those words for the Quran, sister. That says a lot about the Quran, though. He used those words for the imitation. Yeah. No, yeah, but he didn't use those words in all the questions that um, he was asked. And um, I find it sad, in a sense, he expressed that even Arab-speaking part of the world, if they don't have a decent education, they wouldn't be able to understand the Quran. I think that yeah. is sad that while Muslims are reciting the Quran, if they want to just take it and read it, while Arabic is their mother tongue, they're not able to understand it because it's just so much messed up. You need decent yeah. education to just being able to understand let alone study just to understand yeah. what it is saying therefore like like when you sometimes when i show muslims like certain like on for example surah 5 verse 6 you know when I, when i show muslims because of this word um the word needs to be this they don't understand like what i am saying to them it's because yeah. they don't like quran is like so bad <laughs> It's just they can't even put together if they are not qualified from, I don't know, university or something or high school. It's really interesting, sister, because um, I don't like to blow my own trumpet, but I I was uh, fortunate enough to get a higher education in Arabic, sister. Um, It's a waste of time because... Very humble. Thank you, sister. (laughs) It's a waste of time because you're wasting your time when you try to apply it to the Quran you get so little out of it because it's such a, um, a chaotic text. I would rather read another book of poetry, sister, Arabic poetry, me personally. Even as a Muslim, I enjoyed other poetry than uh, the Quran because um, the Quran is just bad. And that's just not just according to me. Uh, Shari Nasser will be talking about the grammarians and um, scholars of language that weren't very impressed with the Quran from a linguistic point of view. Uh, for people who want to um, know what a higher register means, it means, um, for example, poetry has a higher register than just normal conversation. That's in Arabic language. Um, so Quran is on a higher register means it's poetry. And uh, Shadi Nasser will be talking later about how it's very much like Arabic poetry. And that's what the pagans at the time, they recognized. They said, this is poetry. That's according to Surah 69, for, verse 41. They said, it's this is prose, this is a poet. And then Allah said to them, this is not, this is not the speech of a poet as you claim. So they recognize that, you know, what you're saying. And like Brother Jai said, we could write something like it, they said in another verse. Yeah. Um, I think it was 831. So um, there was a 
comment um, Shadi Nasser made regarding you need to have like decent education to as an Arab speaker you need a decent education to understand Quran and then someone is kind of making a asking the question so where does Muhammad stand on this because Muhammad didn't have any education so he didn't understand what he was passing it around um yeah uh, i mean he was Ill you know illiterate um according to uh, tradition and according to Mus some muslims yeah but it's the quran itself is not even consistent in it's the 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 style of poetry uh, that it, that it's it, like he said before the meccan verses are a different style the medinian verses are all over the place it's like normal speech it's not even that higher register anymore um so uh it's it's really not an impressive book at all sister from a linguistic point of view and the, when you translate it it just shows <laughs> you know you have nothing at all it's just it's all jumbled and no meaning left almost it's just yeah not that, very impressive that also makes sense if you remember we had usama brother usama on the live stream and then he was we were talking about the quran he translated and then he stated that Oh, when you read it, you will see some sentence don't make sense because he fa he's, he was faithful to the Arabic and then he translated as the way it was in Arabic. So he didn't kind of made it nicely. Arabic messed up. Yeah. So therefore his translation is messed up words yes. of Arabic. The popular translations are very kind to the Quran. They add in words where the sentences don't end properly. They put things in brackets to make things sense. The the original is actually a bit like it's like it's what Brother Daktok has translated. But the world we live is very harsh. Life is very hard. So therefore, kindness is important, and showing kindness to this messed up Arabic Quran is important. Um, okay. And people had to come in and polish it, sister. Yeah. Remember, people had to come in and polish it and add the dots years. and uh, like like the other gentlemen said muslim gentlemen with their hands put the dots play with the dots do all these interferences to make it palatable to make to make something out of it when it yeah. was very primitive to start with yeah um jay any other comments brother um yeah i, th I think you guys you guys pretty much covered covered it yeah i'm i'm okay i'm okay i'm all set. okay um let's continue and appreciated so you started to to have this shifting narrative towards other miraculous issues in the quran mathematics science astrology to support the argument that it's miraculous all over not just syntax the quran says in chapter 5 verse 15 um, among others that it is a, a clear book would the quran be considered clear some of it is clear, some of it is not clear. Uh, so, as the Quran itself say, right? L-O-L or R-O-F-L. So if you give this to an American, I don't know, 60 years ago, do they understand what R-O-F-L mean? <laughs> or L-O-L? -L? They will never, even though they are English native speakers, take the mysterious letters in the Quran or the disconnected letters. Maybe they meant something for, for the people 1,400 years ago. They didn't ask that many questions about it. They just took it. But then... What's strange about that is we don't uh, actually have any record of anyone ever asking about those things we, in the we Hadith. We don't. I mean, we have some accounts, and then you have competing traditions, what they could mean, but there's no consensus whatsoever mm -hmm. what they really mean. You have more than 30 opinions of, of what they could have meant. But we don't have records of someone going to the Prophet and saying, oh, what does uh, Alif Lam Mim mean? Or ALR, and then he responds clearly. They, there, there's nothing. Yes, there are many problematic verses from a syntactical point. Exegetes and scholars tackled that. They have many different interpretations of it. Yes, there are some verses which, uh, which are problematic uh, because of some grammatical uh, inconsistencies. Maybe there are some mistakes in copying the text, which uh, resulted in an unusual grammatical reading. Is the claim 
that the Quran has no mistakes. Mm -hmm. I think we pause that. Um, so Quran is clear, but some places it's not clear. Is that clear? <laughs> eternal, not eternal, clear and not clear. That's yeah. a miracle. Any comments? Uh yeah, I, I, I think the LOL and RFOL <laughs> is really funny. So different acronyms that we use in English or in any other language, he's, he's saying, well, maybe maybe back then the Aleph, Lim, Ra, or any of these other like random letters on the beginning of these of chapters in the Quran, or, or a lot of them, um, these maybe they made sense to people back then. And they were clear to people back then, but they make no sense to us today. They're unintelligible to us today. Um, I don't know what exactly he's drawing. I mean, maybe that's just his like guess. He's guessing at that. Because as far as I know, all of the commentaries that I've seen on these, they, they don't agree at all as to what these mean. Yep. So it's just a bunch of confusion. Um, apparently, there are 29 different arguments regarding this. So what are those letters means? I guess basic response to that is Quran is so clear. Those things are only Allah knows best. Sister, I have a theory what those uh, letters are. Yes. I think Allah had his phone in his pocket. And you know, when you s someone sits on their phone and they have the, it just presses different letters and it sends. Uh, I think that's what happens. What happened when he was Sister, sending, revealing it why, to humanity? Why would you think <laughs> Allah would have a phone? Um, Remember, like, uh, how, how practically it will be very difficult for him to hold it with two right hands. It will be practically very difficult, since his eyesight is not very good, for him to kind of, by mistake, touch the letters on it. It will be practically very, very difficult <laughs> Very difficult for him to even sit on it because his body doesn't fully function. Maybe, anyway. But, yeah, good good theory, sister. We can add that as not 30 different that's the only That's the only theory that makes sense because he does these letters that don't mean anything and then he realizes and then he texts properly in the next verses. Um, anyway, so is Quran clear? Answer is no because, like... I think there are like over 200 verses in the Quran. People are still discussing what does it mean and which is supposed to be clear. But anyway, so we are hearing from a scholar. Um, he's expressing thus: some part of the Quran is clear. Some part of the Quran is not clear. So therefore, the statement where it is kind of says that this is clear book. That's not simply true. Oh, and that's according to the Quran itself, sister, Surah yeah. 3, verse 7. Yeah, when it Allah says, like, this is the clear book, it's not clear. Yeah. Allah admits there are verses that no one knows the interpretation. Yeah. Um, okay, anything else to add? No? Let's move on. Uh, yeah. Oh, sorry. Okay, we can go. Yeah, yeah no, we can, we, can, we can go to the next part. Okay, so we've been live nearly two hours. We've got six more minutes um, of the video. Continue or pause? What do you think? Let's continue. Sister, uh, what do you think, brother? Yeah. yeah, we can We can probably make it through. Okay. Verifiably true. Gram grammatical mistakes or mistakes, uh, in uh, errors? Uh, in, 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 uh, in its uh, content, in the things that it says, in the claims that it makes. Right. First aspect, let's talk about syntax or, or grammatical mistakes. Okay. The short answer is yes, there are many grammatical inconsistencies in the Quran. If you only take one standardized version of Arabic grammar. And there are also issues with the copying of the text that resulted probably from you know with uh, pr um, some inconsistencies because of some scribal errors that mm -hmm. happened the problematic verses i would say i don't know 200 300 mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. the classical arabic language uh, is is uh, based on the quran or was formed or no, shaped that's, by that's the a quran. that's a misconception the quran okay. is based on arabic not the arabic is based on okay. the quran okay okay <laughs> right okay but, but there was arabic before the quran okay and when and when the quran is uh 
judged based upon the Arabic that existed before the Quran, then you could say that there are certain things within the Quran that are not uh, correct, n that are not not consistent, not perfect. Correct. But correct. then again, that depends entirely on on. on Especially context. when you take the whole tradition of variant readings, mm -hmm. I mean, people only now focus mostly on one reading. Mm -hmm. But the other six or nine readings, which have many grammatical variations from the standard Arabic, grammarians always recourse to other dialects, mm -hmm. okay, to try to justify this peculiar grammatical anomaly, let's say. Uh, there were treatises even written about you know, one, one or two verses which are grammatically completely should be incorrect. Uh -huh. If they were written by a person, by a poet, they would go after him. It's like, oh, this is wrong. You don't justify. But because it's the Quran, you have to justify. It cannot be wrong. And they, the they don't want to say there's, it's impossible to say that there's a scribal error. There's no error. God mm -hmm. is, is, uh, is, is, is even inspiring the scribes um, yeah. to, to write correctly. There are no such thing as a mistake. There's no such thing as scribal error. It's almost, they are not humans. I mean, even computers make mistakes, right? Mm -hmm. the, the narrative is very different from the early period. You have many voices among Muslim scholars who did say that there are errors, there are mistakes. We did our best to fix mm -hmm. the text. God knows best. Okay. Move on, Move on. <laughs> right? Mm -hmm. But that's not how things became lately. Yeah. Lately, not in the past 10 years, but probably in the past few hundred years. Mm -hmm. uh, where no every everything uh, should be perfect there's no there's no room for error mm -hmm. and that's that's the issue here and back to abrogation if you mm -hmm. are saying that there are abrogated verses so were these verses when they were quran they were old but then they became new how could you abrogate something that is eternal so yeah, the, the yeah. point is that people were discussing these things they were mm -hmm. not they they were not uh, you know, naive to the idea that, oh, well, everything is perfect and everything. Mm -hmm. No, they, they knew there were problems and they debated and they never resolved it and they will mm -hmm. never resolve it. Historical inconsistencies, that's another issue. And scholars do work about that, especially theologians. So what does it mean when the Quran say that there are some Jews who say that God has a son? Mm -hmm. Okay, so as, scholars, the Israel is the son of Allah. Right. Uh, so yeah. scholars are interested in that. So, I mean, as far as Judaism goes, I mean, they have no information that there are factions within Judaism that says God has a son. Maybe this was something that people believed in. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Right. And the Quran is just re re-emphasizing re that or re uh, putting this into context that there are some Jews who are saying that. But maybe that's what people thought. <laughs> Mis being misinformed. The Quran is the revealed word of Allah, mm -hmm. and whoever does not add unchanged to it is a disbeliever. So what do we mean by unchanged? Is it unaltered, that there's no replacement for one word to another word? Uh, but that's also, again, problematic, because we do also know that many companions did replace one word by another. Ibn Mas'ud, as an example, for, and this this tradition continued for hundreds of years. What would be the best answer? Okay, let's pause here. Um, so there were lots of conversations regarding the grammatical mistakes of the Quran, as well as theological mistakes of the Quran. As you can see, like person is not formed his questions well, it didn't come up nice, but um, any comments, um, brother? Yeah, in regards to what he said about, he was very careful with how he worded this, about the grammatical inconsistencies. If you adopt a standard Arabic grammar, so if there's only one standardized Arabic grammar and you adopt that as you read the Quran, then there are many inconsistencies throughout the Quran. And a lot of the times these uh, these commentaries will try to get out of the grammatical inconsistencies is they'll say, oh, th this was acceptable in this dialect or that dialect or, you know, they just kind of make things up. But according to the best of our knowledge, these were like if we were to impose the like, like let's say that let's say the standard that we have today for Arabic grammar, if the, the knowledge of grammar that we have today and what we consider to be grammatically correct today in Arabic, if we were to read the Quran in light of that, then there are many errors or inconsistencies as he said yeah. he talked about 200 to 300 problematic verses and then also he expressed like 
Quran is based on Arabic, Aramic, Arabic grammar, not Arabic grammar is based on Quran. Right. That, that's a really important point that it's not that it's not the case that that Arabic is based on the Quran. No, no. Our, the Quran. So Arabic predates the Quran. The Quran is based on Arabic. It's the opposite of what Muslims claim. Yeah. Um, um, beloved sister, any comments from you? How can you abrogate something that is eternal? Um, yeah. I, I want to. I want. I want to ask our um, abrogation sheikh uh, Muji if you're listening. Um, and he said that um, they were not naive. The early Muslims were not naive enough to think that everything is perfect. Does that mean that the modern Muslims are naive, sister? They uh, are naive. I think. I think not only that, but also this something called like modern scholarship. Poor yeah. early Muslims who spent time with Muhammad, and they just like lived soon after Muhammad. Poor those early Muslims. They didn't have this so-called early scholarship. Now with the today's scholarship, they were able to kind of make such a comments. But before, before they didn't have this this thing. So no. Normally, sister, through history, people normally get more information, get more enlightened. Now we have the internet, we have all sorts of information. But it seems to me that the early Muslims had more reason, more logic, asked more questions, and were not naive, didn't knew that there were problems and they were trying to resolve them. They said, we did we did our best to, to uh, fix the text, Allah knows best. Whereas the newer Muslims are more naive, more ignorant, have no idea what's going on uh, than the earlier Muslims. So why is this this regression? Uh, it's very interesting, uh, and I we just hope that the new Muslims, the modern Muslims, can be as 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 good as the older, older Muslims, in the way they look at their religion. And the last point I want to make, sister Ibn Masoud, sister, isn't he yeah. the one that we were told earlier by Dawa gangs that his Quran is the same as everybody else's, replaced one word with another word, many times. Yeah, just thought I'd get that in there. Yeah, just make sure our Mister Muslim is. Listening that, yeah. Um, any comments and um, um, response um, or thoughts or feelings anyone wants to express regarding not only there are um, grammatical mistakes in the Quran, but also theological mistakes of such as Ezra is the yeah. Jewish claims Ezra is the son of uh -huh. Allah versus Christians claims Jesus is the son of Allah or Messiah is the son of Allah. Um, so there are like, of course, I'm not, I'm not touching to the grammatical sense of it where um, Messiah can also be identified as like with Allah, but on the point of the theological mistakes, how, and historical mistake, how um, auto of Quran got it wrong regarding Ezra to be the son of Allah. Right. So, so yeah, that's that's definitely a mistake that and 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 he words it in a way. Again, he's really careful with how he words this stuff, but it's important to point that out because it shows you his perspective of how he thinks the Quran was composed. It's like it's he's saying it's it's possible this is just some people's misunderstanding of what Jews believed, and then they're 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 giving this verse. So there, it's not coming from a divine revelation or divine yeah. source from his perspective. It's just someone who's confused about what Jews believe. And then they're then they're kind of making up like this verse based off their misunderstanding, and we see this throughout throughout the Quran. The yeah. Quran often misunderstands Christians, Jews, and, and misunderstands so many different groups, and it, and it and it attributes things, it falsely attributes things to them that they or that we as Christians do not actually believe. Yeah, such a shame. Like, uh, in a sense. Okay, human beings contributed to it anyway, but such a shame shame that like they didn't even get it right what people among them according to tradition believing at the first place. That's like sad, let alone like if if you start with the uh, statement that actually Quran is the eternal word of Allah, that's make it worse because Allah doesn't even know what Jews be believe. Allah doesn't even know what Christians believe. Um so that again shows Allah is not all knowing at all. But yes, we hearing we are hearing from a scholar where it's been expressed that actually hum humans who kind of misunderstood that simply put that into the Quran. 
not good, not good. Um, yeah. Thought of Christ, any other points? No, sister, that was perfect. We can continue. Okay. Uh, wow, we are about to finish. Let's go 30 seconds back and then pick it up again. Revealed word of Allah, mm -hmm. and whoever does not add unchanged to it is a disbeliever. So, um, that, so I think he means to phrase it in a sense, um, every letter, even every dots in the Quran, is identified as the word of Allah. If you doubt, even to the doubt, you are identified as kafir. So that's very basic Islamic tradition. Um, so just I just wanted to rephrase that better. Sorry. What do we mean by unchanged? Is it unaltered that there's no replacement for one word to another word? Uh, but that's also, again, problematic because we do also know that many companions did replace one word by another. Ibn Mas'ud as an example for, and this, this tradition continued for hundreds of years. What would be the best answer in your professional opinion to the question, who wrote or who authored the Quran? Uh, as a person, you know, or <laughs> a person, I mean, it's back to the original question. If you, if you believe you would say that it's a uh, revelation if you don't believe it's muhammad who wrote it it's mm -hmm. as simple as that the book as a whole it was a it was arranged um edited recited uh polished over decades and even centuries by the community we can easily verify okay i'm just gonna go back to make sure we all pick that up again that we didn't miss understand what has been just said let's listen that again for a person i mean it's back to the original question if you if you believe you would say that it's a uh, revelation if you don't believe it's muhammad who wrote it it's mm. as simple as that the book as a whole it was a it was arranged um edited recited uh polished over decades and even centuries by the community. We can easily verify through our sources that styles of recitation developed over time. Mm -hmm. They were not the way that you hear now the Quran. It's highly improbable that this is how they were reciting it 1400 years ago with the complex rules of recitation and how grammar developed. They have so many repetitive verses in the Quran. Mm -hmm. Were they really repeated because of the copying process or was it really repeated during the course of revelation? Mm -hmm. They have many mm -hmm. chunks of verses and stories repeated over and over and yeah. over. So this repetition is a, a sign of orality. You don't have this kind of repetition in a, in a composed work. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So that's, again, one argument against people or against the group of people who say, well, the Quran was a composed text at a certain point of time. You don't have someone who's writing, who's sitting down and writing something, and then you keep repeating the frames all over the Quran. I'm not just talking about one chapter. Yep. If I were to sit down today and, and uh, write a book. Okay, let's pause. Actually, let's finish. I would write a book that uh, were... Uh, the content is properly organized and put into a of line of thoughts, right. separated chapter for chapter, and uh, in which uh, many. Otherwise, they will not publish out. your work. They will they will reject it. Okay, so um, who wrote the Quran or who polished the Quran? <laughs> who, right. give, who give the idea of the Quran and then who kind of made it the Quran? Yeah, uh, depends on your perspective, <laughs> right? That's that's what he says. So there's no there's, uh, and I th I think I think if if he was asked, I think he might elaborate on it a bit more. If if only Muhammad is the author, or if maybe there's multiple authors, or how exactly, uh, or what what the Quran we have today, or the multiple Qurans we have today, where they are actually from, where they are, where, where their origins are, their sources are. Uh, I wonder how he would interact with that type of question if he was asked. Yeah. So. So, so, so uh, yeah, so that, that's kind of, uh, yeah, one point. Um, maybe if one of your sisters want to comment on that, then we'll take up another point that he said. Yeah, what I got from that brother and sister is that it was initially Muhammad and then uh, a team effort, sister and brother, after that, because he said edited and polished. 
edited, edited, <laughs> and polished, <laughs> and polished. So um, it was, you know, polished. You know what polished is? You have something that's rough. I wouldn't buy something that needs polishing. I would want to buy the polished product. So it was all rough and, you know, messed up. And then you got someone with some sandpaper came and uh, polished it. Uh, arranged and recited over centuries by the community and evolved, changed, that means changed over time in terms of recitation styles into what we have today. So what we have today, it's not what they recited. It's not what they recited and it's not how they recited. And um, yeah, that's what I want to, that's, that's what I got, sister. It's, um, it is sad though, like on a serious level. Um, but it's good that we learned the lesson of why and how teamwork is important. <laughs> right now we are doing teamwork. So, so you see like one of the things, one of us doesn't say, other one steps in and then adds on it. So you see teamwork makes it better. And mm. it is good that when it comes to the eternal word of Allah, there is a whole team <laughs> edit it and then polish it and then sell it out but he already had a team in heaven remember he had the pen he had the tablets <laughs> i know but he also he also needed his slaves the muslims that were meant to be like limited imperfect humans creatures to help his eternal well, amazing yeah. it, divine and yeah i i am a team with you and brother jay, jay but none of us are divine sister none of us are like mm, well above the other yeah, in here, I think without Muslim teamwork, without the help of Muslims, um, no one would buy the Quran. No one would put their eternity into that book. But anyway, um, so essential lesson from last point we learn is make sure you always team up with people. You um, see the hikmah? You see the hikmah? Yeah, yeah you see the hikmah? <laughs> Yeah, well, one one point one point to say about that the polishing point. I thought I thought this was really interesting that he's saying because Arabic different theories of Arabic grammar were developing, so yeah. there there were different rules implemented on, like you know how today in 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 like the Quran you have rules on recitals like you can pause here, you have to take you take a breath here, all of these things. He's saying like the way that it's recited today, it's extremely or very implausible that this is recited that way 1400 years ago because all of these things developed later on. So something that that was considered, um, it has to be like, let's say like in English, like a comma or something like that, like certain grammar. He's saying like th th these sort of things that were put into the Quran later on are based on the fact that the grammar is developing and these things are developing. So the way that they're reciting it, the way, not just not just with pauses and breathtaking and things like that, but just the style, even the style that they're using uh, to recite the Quran. This is something that's developed and the way that a Muslim recites the Quran today is not how Muhammad did it, or we have no evidence that that's how Muhammad did it 1400 years ago. Hmm... Not good. Like overall, uh, doesn't look good to me. Like it doesn't help Muslims at all. Um, but we shouldn't be surprised because his book wasn't helping Muslims at all. Um, Daughter of Christ, any other comments? Yes, sister. He made this point about repetition, which to me, sister, I learned something new. Good. I always, I always wondered as a Muslim why Allah kept repeating the same thing over and over again. He said, Shadi Nasir answered, he said, because it's an oral text. Remember, Muhammad is illiterate. So um, he couldn't write things down. So I'm thinking he kept repeating the same point because he, can't, he couldn't remember that he said the same verse like a month ago. That makes so much sense. Um, I could have a rebuttal to that, but I don't think we should be having that rebuttal here. Uh, oh, oh, just a oh, side note on also, um, remember there is a hadith where Muhammad is praising for someone who is reminding him um, the yeah. Quranic verse. Right, he's forgetting, yeah. Yeah, for yeah. Time, like he didn't have even good memory. Um, it's really uh, unfortunate if you're illiterate and you have bad memory because if you're illiterate, you could write things down to remind yourself. But if you're illiterate, where do you go? To you go and depend on others. But 
even though when it is written down, still there were lots of issues though. Like teachers had a problem, students had a problem with the memory. Even like it is written down by who were able to write things down. We still end up having many different Qurans. Mm. That didn't help when it come to Quran. In a sense, you think, oh yeah, it should help. But it didn't help that much when it come to the Quran, I guess. Hmm, that was kind of end of the end of the video. So we watched um, twenty nine twenty nine minutes thirty second or something. And overall, what is the overall take? <laughs> short the short answer. You know how he kept doing short answer and long answer. Yeah. Well, the short answer. <laughs> the short answer is that there are holes in the narrative. <laughs> uh, I think he made it like more holes because there were simply like basic um some of the questions were very basic muslim claims yes and no and then it went on that um right right yeah uh, i wish there were some better questions to ask uh, but anyway missed the opportunity on that um anything kind of you thought it was new to you brother jai well, one of the points that I really liked was the 400 year point when he's talking about yeah. Al Mutanabi and his other, and his other, like he's talking, like he's referencing um, people that are very famous in Arab literature and their poetry. And basically, uh, like the idea that they were writing competing literatures to the Quran and they had backing and support and stuff, like, and, and then they, you know, then they would rebut people and say, well, give me 400 years like you had. And, you know, give me some followers, give me some mosques and we'll polish it like you guys did. I thought that was, uh, yeah, those, those are really inf interesting pieces of information that I, I didn't know about. Uh, I didn't know about before. Well, I mean, I know about al Mutanabi and I knew about these people, but I didn't know um, the, like that they were challenged on like, oh, why didn't, why didn't your Quran take off or why didn't your book take off? So yeah. that was new information to me. And um, other thing is um, because like, Edited and polishing took like 400 years for them to produce a little bit better version of it. And then guy is like simply asking the same thing. Uh, sadly, in this broken world, we are not going to live for 400 years. So, um, daughter of Christ? We don't have to wait for 400 years, sister. Shadi Nasser said no one would publish the Quran today. Yeah, if you... If you yeah, but, true. Yeah, we do you, have... You wouldn't the, publish it. Yeah. Remember, we have the um, the true Furkan. Yes. Yeah, some people produce similar books, and then yeah, if you kind of have the Quran of Muhammad with all unedited and un Polish version, it's just gonna be not good. No one is gonna buy and put their eternity in it. I think people should still not buy it and not put their eternity in it because I think they give it out freedom. No, it's not. You don't. You don't have to buy. It's just. They give it no. to you now. Now they pay you. Now they pay you to take it. No, take it, take it. And you're like, no, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> if it was so amazing, people would be like jumping at it, but that's not what's happening. Uh, this is a stupid book, sister. That's what I got. This is a stupid book. You go from ling linguistically, it's silly. Uh, it's not miraculous. It's not um, anything special. Muslims knew about the problems from day one. And uh, it's not preserved. It's not anything Muslims think it is. So why are Muslims following it? Is what I want to ask. Yeah, um, it's not um, all. We, we didn't go through this video in the intention of, oh yeah, Islam is very much messed up. He's another proof or um, short answer. There are more holes in the narrative. But <laughs> point, <Right>. point, <laughs> point is... The lies you've been told all of your life is now coming to uh, respond is coming to that coming to that lies from the academics and they are simply saying yes there are more holes in the narrative yes that can't be from God yes someone just edited that yes um, there was a time when Prophet Muhammad was struggling to get his revelation there were lots of issues. But point is, with all those problems, let's say, sake of the argument, someone bought that uh, unedited and unpolished version of the Quran. 
you are going to end up in a place where our triune God is not present and that's hell. Therefore, we just want to bring those, um, what the scholars are saying to your attention so that uh, beloved ones can use in their discussion with Muslims in the intention of introducing Lord Jesus Christ. Because we don't want people to Amen. hear those arguments and become a, um ex-Muslim. Uh, like the person who is interviewing Shadi Nasir is identified as, as ex-Muslim, but it's the, it's the same, like he's not going to spend eternity with our delightful Lord. He's, he's not saved. Therefore, our intention is we reach the Muslims, we help them to have doubts, we, uh, we question them, and Lord does his part, and he will bring, back, bring them to himself. That's our goal. So it, th those videos Amen. are the intention of finding the grounds to question and causing doubts to Muslims in the intention of bringing people to Lord Jesus Christ. Our, our word of God his heart is so beautiful, he doesn't want people to end up in hell. Therefore, he gave himself for people. Our word of God is so delightful, he doesn't have all those like um, word, all those things in himself that doesn't make sense. He's delightful, he's perfect, he's beautiful, he's gorgeous, he's amazing. Therefore, while we were nobody, he made us somebody, he made us his. Um, so all those videos are in that intention. Um, Amen. So, um, Jai, do you want to make yes. your own conclusion of that video as well as I'll ask the same thing to Daughter of Christ? And also, um, while you make your conclusion, maybe to us, and would you be kind enough to just remind people your YouTube channel if anyone hasn't subscribed it so they can check it out and then they can follow some of your jokes over there as well sure and i'd like to uh well yeah let me start with this the, the conclusion and i just want to i want to echo the words that you said sister that our goal is not to just see muslims out of islam and realize that they've been lied to and therefore they just leave islam and that's it no that's not that's not our intention that's not our goal that that might be step one you know, realize that you've been lied to, realize that Islam is false, but that's not where we want you to stop. We want you to come in repentance on your knees and calling out to the Lord Jesus Christ and accepting Him and believing in Him and the finished work and believing in the gospel. That's that's our goal. That is our intention in this. So just so it's clear to everybody. Um, and in terms of the conclusions for the interview, I think a way to summarize it is to say that if you want to look at the Quran from an academic perspective, you're not going to walk away of it. You're not going to walk away from it as a traditional Muslim. You cannot accept the standard narrative. You can't accept basically any of the things that the that the die the 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 the, um, the da the the Dawah gangs that I was, I was getting caught on the gang part, like the, what do I want to call them? Gangs. <laughs> yeah. the, Gangs the, the Dawah gangs. Yeah. <laughs> you, you can't, you can't affirm their version of Islam. You can't, you cannot do that. This doesn't, this doesn't fit in academia. It doesn't fit in reality. It doesn't, it's not, it's not real. Their version of Islam is not actually based on anything other than what they're proclaiming. It doesn't actually have roots. Like when they say that the, there's only one Quran, th this doesn't have roots. This doesn't. This is this is a lie. Like the guy who was posting comments before saying like there's only one reading. No, no, this is a lie. This is not true. Um, so yeah, that's kind of um, a brief summary uh, in terms of the YouTube channel. I see you have it on the screen here. Uh, Jay Apologetics. I'm actually going to be doing another live stream in about three hours from now with Chris Kloss. So if anybody's interested in checking that out, we're going to be doing another review. Uh, I won't say who the review is of, just so I don't give this person attention. But <laughs> it's gonna be something that we uh, we we did. Uh, sorry, some an interview that happened yesterday, and we're just gonna be reviewing it today together. I think uh, I think Ask Truth Apologetics will be with us, and so we're gonna be doing that tonight uh, in about three hours from now on Chris Kloss's channel. So, Lord willing. Uh, 
you guys want to see more and you're free in three hours, uh, hopefully I'll see you on Chris's channel. Uh, thank you so much for having me on, Sister Atune and Sister Daughter of Christ. It's always a pleasure to do streams with you. I really love to. It's it's like a, such a blessing to be with you, sisters. And uh, just, uh, yeah, I can't wait till we do something else again. Thank you so much for having me on. Thank you very much, brother. You are just so kind. Um, um, daughter of Christ. So you need to say like something kind, kind things as well, so that you don't come up come out as rude after brother Jai. <laughs> Uh, don't fire me, <laughs> brother Jai. Uh, because you're so polite, it shows yeah. <laughs> show, shows me up, brother. So now she's gonna fire me. No, we love having you, and um, it's always your perspective is always very um, unique and knowledgeable. Thank you for being here with us. Um, I don't want to ruin the conclusion, sister. I think you and brother Jai did perfect, perfectly. Um. Yes, um, so um, thank you, Doctor of Christ, and thank you, Brother Jai. Um, as Jai said, um, there is a live stream going to take place at 2 o'clock in three hours. Um, please, please do. I think this is the link. Is this the link? Um, this might be the link. Please do um, follow that up. Um, if Muslims had a debate, that means they messed up more and they are destroying Islam by their own hands um allah may be helping them out something is happening there do check that out um both of you thank you very much for joining us uh, joining me as well overall uh, eternal word of allah quran messed up lord jesus christ eternal word of god is perfect beautiful delightful dear muslim um friends or muslim people however you take that Please, please repent and turn to Lord Jesus Christ. He's delightful and he wants to delight in you. And um, dear beloved ones, may Christ crucified silently with his love. By grace of God, we will see you on another live stream or at Speaker's Corner. God bless you all. And once again, um, Jai and Daughter of Christ, thank you very much for joining me.